spirits? Come on, integral. That made me feel like I was in a dream. I'm like, they're calling me. They're calling me. Jay Hood, Jay Hood. This, that's how good this experience is and has been. It feels like living a dream. So thank you guys for that amazing energy y'all just gave me. Let's see what we got today. Let's get this thing started now. Before I take my sip, I gotta show you my mug and it has all these diverse women on it. And here inside, if you take a peek, look at it. It's, Y'all see this? This is a beautiful mug. Can you see close enough? <laughs> and in the inside, it says we're all in this together. Now, I would tilt it over for you, but I'm gonna spill my good little drink up in there <laughs> that I always take my sip on. Okay, hold on. Now, you already know what I'm finna do. <laughs> Don't be looking at me crazy. I see you watch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take my sip. Thank you, Deborah. Mm, mm, mm. From San Bernardino, California, for this extra cute mug. It, it's so great. And the beautiful message. Thank you so much for that. Again, y'all are getting. <laughs> Everyone is getting more and more creative with your mug. So I love this. This is amazing. And it's going to go up on my mug wall. I pick me a mug every day, y'all, before I start my day. And y'all have added so many more beautiful mugs to it. I don't even know which one to drink out of. <laughs> I, I may be late sometimes trying to pick which mug. I need more wall space for all my beautiful mugs. OK, I'm done with my mug moment. Now, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. You know, right? <laughs> and you know, we all are children, have been children, got children. And as kids, we all kept secrets from our moms. Uh-huh, I hear all of them, mm hmm And since Mother's Day is right around the corner, we thought we would give some of our audience members a chance to come clean on national TV. <laughs> yup. So our producer set up a confessional booth. <laughs> Don't you love it? I think this is so funny. <laughs> Take a look at what happened. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hi, Mom. This is my mom's. I have a confession. I, like, this is the first time I ever told her this, but I took her car and I ran it into a drive through and I was just a little embarrassed, but yeah, I was like, oh, going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. When I was 16, all those nights you thought I was in the bed sleep, I used to sneak out at my boyfriend's and go to my boyfriend's house. <laughs> When I was 12, I found your penthouse erotica magazines. And I know you're smiling down at me because I've been married for 36 years, so something's working. So that one time when the youth choir sang the wrong words at the guest church, it wasn't really an accident. I said it was an accident. We pre-planned it. So I know that the line that I was supposed to give was 5,000 hungry souls he fed. But instead, she said, 5,000 hungry hoes he fed. <laughs> and I responded, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. So sorry, Mom. That was not a slip of the tongue. We just needed some fun. <laughs> Now, I done did a lot of things growing up, but we ain't, we ain't sing that song like that in, in my <laughs> church. OK? <laughs> OK. OK, from the sounds of these confessions, some of y'all was a handful, <laughs> but now it's time to make it up to mom. Oh, and a great way to celebrate mom for Mother's Day is to take her to Red Lobster. <laughs> One of my favorite things is when my boys, my son and all his cousins, take me out to eat and then make the meal extra good, y'all, when they got to pay the bill. <laughs> Up, and this year, Red Lobster will be giving out special interactive cards throughout Mother's Day weekend for kids to enjoy, and it includes a 10% off 
coupon for your next visit. So to help all of you treat mom this Mother's Day, everyone in the audience is going home with a Red Lobster $100 gift card. Enjoy the cheddar bay biscuits and bring me some, okay? Yes. Well, we have a great show and we all are about to be in the presence of an amazing young woman. At only 18 years old, she has helped the lives of over 26,000 children from all over the world. From Maryland, please welcome Grace Carwood. Hi. Hi, it's so amazing to meet you. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so you have such an amazing story. Tell us how it all got started. Absolutely. So um, it was just after my seventh birthday that I was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And being a seven-year-old, I had absolutely no idea what cancer was or what it meant until I had it. I just knew that my life was changing completely and I just had to get used to a new routine. But I was a very shy kid um, and so there were a lot of changes ahead of me. Oh my God. And, and how, what did inspire you to, to start giving back? It was a little bit after I was diagnosed, a family friend had told us about a family who had lost their home in a fire and they had two little girls. And all I could think about was how I related to those two little girls, even though I didn't even know their names, but how we had both entered brand new situations. They had just become homeless and I had just become sick. And those were two situations where our unfortunate situation was not our fault. And this really drove me towards wanting to give back. And so it was with that act of kindness that I knew that I went to spend the rest of my life giving back, regardless of how much time I knew I had left. Mm. You seem so wise beyond your years. Thank you. How did you even begin to start a nonprofit when you were seven years old? It was it was quite a journey. Um, initially, my mom wasn't really all for it because for. For one thing, I was sick, but I was also seven years old and just in the first grade. But over time, I was able to do various projects just to show her and the community that I was very serious about giving back. And so after a while, I was able to build up a youth board of advisors between the ages of eight and 18. Um, and together, we've been able to help over 26,000 youth. <laughs> My God. Where would you say you get your passion for service from? My passion really comes from my family, um, as well as my faith foundation, and really my new understanding of what it's like to be a kid in a situation that is not your fault. Um, I've been giving back technically since I was about one and a half, but I got serious about it when I was seven um, because of wow. my, my diagnosis. And so with that, I was really just able to have a new understanding, a new perspective of what it's like. And I really want to give back because I've been given so much throughout my journey, whether it be from friends or family, church family, the community. Um, and so that's really a passion of mine and why I love helping homeless, sick, and foster children. Mm. It's so amazing. How much have you raised in donations? We have been able to um, go, we have been able to donate over four hundred thousand dollars in in-kind products, um, <laughs> and I've been able to raise over one hundred fifty thousand dollars through awards and grants from my organization. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I have to ask you: Did you ever think, when you started this, that you would be able to bless so many people? Are you impressed with how far you've come? I'm absolutely amazed at how far we've been able to come, just because when I was younger, I, I truly had no idea it would grow to be such a large organization. Um, although I should have, I started out with a board of 13 youth. I was just pulling people from all over the place. Um, and so while our youth board has changed and will continue to change, it really has been quite a blessing to be able to help so many people and really just be able to I basically just make a good service out of my life. You have done that. <laughs> Will you stick around? Because I want to keep talking to you. Absolutely. All right. More with Grace after this. We're back with the incredible Grace Callwood. Uh, what's next for you? You've done so many things. Thank you. Um, next, I am definitely looking towards going to college. I'm also looking to put some new youth in on my board to keep it going. <laughs> nice. Uh, where do you want to go to college? I would absolutely love to go to Howard University. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Well, ha that's amazing. You. Have you heard back from Howard? Not yeah. yet. We'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> okay. We want to cheer on, right? <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, well, Grace, I have to tell you something. It turns out you weren't waitlisted. Your family actually wanted to surprise you here today. You've been accepted into Howard oh, University. Oh,
Social Science Scholars Program. Yes, we even have a video message from the Howard University president. Check this out. Hi, Grace. I'm Wayne Frederick, the president of Howard University, and I want to congratulate you. You've been admitted to the incoming class of 2027. I am extremely proud of the fact that you will be joining us. You also will be admitted to our Humanities and Social Sciences Scholar Program. This is the first year that we will be taking in students. The goal here is to get young African Americans like yourself interested in a doctoral degree in the Humanities and Social Sciences. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Congratulations. Oh my God, congratulations. Congratulations, so Grace. Thank you, Mom. Wow. I'm, I'm getting emotional, so how do you feel? I, I have no word. I can, at first, I'm just thinking that I'm here, first of all, but that is, that is, wow. That is amazing. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. You've done so many great things and you are brilliant, so it is well deserved. And we all want to say congratulations, right, guys? And thank you, Howard University. We'll be right back. From the West Wing to the Mighty Ducks from Apocalypse, now to the Breakfast Club, our next guests are two Hollywood legends, and they also happen to be father and son. Please welcome Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez. It's so cool to have you two here together. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the happy place. <laughs> Great to be here. Do Thank you feel you all the love? Feeling the love. guys. Feeling the love. Wow. <laughs> All right. So you guys must love working together. But he's the only one that hires me these days. Oh! <laughs> have you always been close? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, I think we've sort of felt more like friends. I True. Think, than than yeah. father. I mean, we, you know, he yeah. had me when I was, or it was tw you were 21? I was 21. I, yeah. <laughs> 21. I had so, a, there was a, there was a, uh, a, oh, there we are, yeah. Yeah. There was a, a mysterious uh, kind of feeling I had that I knew him long before he arrived. I knew him all my life. I just didn't know when he was going to show up. When he showed up, I said, oh, you're the guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And, 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 you know, my mother Janet and my dad and I were, were sort of a unit, mm -hmm. right? We were like, you know, in early days in New York. We were just like this, the three of us, sort of getting evicted from one place to another and, <laughs> and just and watching him sort of struggle as an actor. Mm -hmm. And my mom was a struggling artist. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, my formative years were watching these two amazing artists kind of work through their lives and mm -hmm. try to raise now, you know, four kids in New York City. And it was, they were not easy times. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And Martin, you brought your whole family to work with you? Uh, well, not. Uh, not to work with me, but to <laughs> <laughs> stay nearby while I was working. Yeah, uh, I, 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 w w particularly when I went on long uh, uh, thing, oh my, look at that. I yeah. love the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would try to uh, make sure that we could stay together. If the, if the location was distant and it was a long time, then I had to make sure that they were with me, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. So we could put them in schools in some areas and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, they, my, my folks believed that for the family to actually stay together, we had to actually stay together. Mm -hmm. And that meant traveling. So he had it in his deal that wherever they traveled, wherever he went to work, we went with him, whether we liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you enjoy it? Some of it, yeah. yeah. I mean, some of it was amazing. I, we got to see the world. Yeah. And it was really immersive travel because we, you know, we got a job in Mexico. We go to Mexico, we'd be there for four months. Got a job in Rome, we'd be in Rome for three months. Oh. The Philippines, six months. Were you there for two years? But, yeah. but it was, we would be dug in and it would be sort of this immersive experience. Nice. Where it wasn't just travel, it wasn't just work, it was, it was both. It was both. Mm -hmm. And Martin, are, are you afraid of flying? I'm afraid of flying, yes. Yeah. I, I've never been comfortable on an airplane, ever. Really? <laughs> I've had to do it a, a lot in order to get to locations or jobs or stuff, but no, I'm never comfortable. I prefer to drive. Or I used to take the uh, Greyhound bus from New York to L.A. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I like the road More than trip one occasion, too, yeah. Three and a half days on the Hound, yeah. Three and a half days? Three and a half days in the old days, yeah. Did you ever get to do that? I didn't do the Greyhound, no. <laughs> no. But, I, but I do my fair share of driving now. I love seeing the country. I'm all, I'm all over the country driving from here to Cincinnati and back and wherever I can. I just get in that car and go. Now, is it true that Lawrence Fishburne saved your life? Yes. Yeah. Tell us about it. How'd it happen? 
Well, was that we only known each other a couple of days, uh -huh. and this was in the Philippines, and he says, hey, there's this little boat, let's go out on it. And I said, sure. We were both 14 at the time, and so we were out on this, on this boat together, and we started getting too close to the shore, and I said, well, let me jump out. I'll push us off offshore. I jumped out and it was like quicksand mud and I was just sinking Whoa. like that. And I just saw Fishburne just looking at me going, Rick, grab, grab my hand. And he pulled me back up onto the boat and that was, and we were, we were bonded ever since. I'd yeah. imagine. Yeah. Oh my God. Now mind you, uh, <laughs> we wrote a, a father-son memoir together mm -hmm. not too long ago and I found out about this incident when I read the book. I didn't have a clue. You're just finding out about it. And I called Mr. Fishburne to thank him for yes. saving my son's yes. life. <laughs> well, sort of like those those confessions you had earlier with, yeah. the, with the mothers and the daughters. Oh, it was look, like, look, look. There he is. Look, look. Oh, there he is. Oh, you can see it here, too. Yeah. Okay. It's some great pictures. <laughs> OK. Mm. That was recent, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we had a 40, 40th anniversary of the Apocalypse Now, mm. and uh, yes, yeah, the last time I saw it. What is anniversary? Now, when did you know he wanted to be an actor? Uh, I didn't really know. I knew he was interested in high school and such, but one day I was doing a job here in L.A. Uh, on Insight, which was an a anthology series uh, with Father Bud Kaiser. And uh, uh, I looked over at one point, and I saw him on the set, and I thought he came to visit me. He was in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't even tell him? No, no, that's the thing. You just you don't tell your parents. You just you just show up, and it's like, okay, I'm gonna try this now. And, um, yeah, yeah. Now, Emilio, so is it hard to get in touch with your dad? Yes, because he has a cell phone. He just never turns it on. <laughs> so you know, I'll be try. I, there'll be some emergency or something. I need to get him. It's like, nope. The phone will just will go right to voicemail. It's like. Come on, man. So, so you're not for the cell phone? No, I, I never learned uh, how to use a computer, frankly, no. I never have. And he, he doesn't know it, but I don't know how to answer the phone. I keep it, I I keep it in the car for emergency. <laughs> but if an emergency comes, you have to get out of the car to make the call. Because it says on there, you can't make a call in the car. <laughs> so, yeah. So I hope, I hope you're not in an emergency when I'm around and you're <laughs> expecting help from me, because it's going to be a while. It's true. <laughs> Absolutely. I have true. to ask you, what do you think about FaceTiming? I don't even know what that is. I'm no, sorry. no, tell no. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. You, see, I figured you didn't know. You ain't go over this with him? No. He doesn't even know how to program a VCR. I mean, he doesn't even like go, and does anyone even know what a VCR is anymore? Or a, or a, a CD player? Or a, none of it. Forget it. But ask him to find a church in any city in America. He will find his church. I'll take it. He will find his church. On a, wait, on a, on a paper map. Oh, no, paper oh, no, 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 yeah, he doesn't look, no. So no sure. Siri either? No, no, no Siri, no. He said who? No, no, no. I went to school and I studied uh, computers uh, uh, for a period of six weeks. I failed. They said, <laughs> take it again. What else you got to do? I took it again and I failed. <laughs> and when, when the semester ended, they asked me to, be in a photograph with, this is in Ireland, the National University of Ireland. Uh -huh. And they asked me to be in a photograph. And I said, well, I didn't graduate there. They said, it doesn't matter. You don't have to make your living with a computer. So <laughs> they gave me a certificate. So you said, eh, forget yeah. that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I love this. That's so funny to me. Okay, and Martin, you've been married over 60 years. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Was it love at first sight? No. No? No, ma'am, no. So how did you set up their anniversary celebration? So their 60th anniversary in the middle of COVID, you know, obviously most of the restaurants were closed. My girlfriend Jackie came up with this idea. She says, why don't we just turn the living room into a restaurant? So we did. We set up the table. We put the, uh, a thing at the front door, of like a podium. I put the, there it is. It's so sweet. Set up a reservation. Hold on. That's, that's the dinner. We coursed it out. But oh what we did was... <laughs> We didn't tell them that we weren't, but we were going to ignore them. So we pretended to be these people that you see, Gern and <laughs> Lars and Charlie served the, um, he came over and did played server for a minute. He couldn't uh, pronounce amuse-bouche. <laughs> What's this called again? Amuse-bouche. So he sat down the first and the second course. 
I played um, Philippe, the maitre d'. I played Gern, another waiter. I played, so. So you were multiple people. Yeah, and we didn't break character. They would mm. for, I, I for said, three oh, hours. Okay, that's great. Sit down and join us. Oh, no, no, no. We're not allowed to sit with the customers. <laughs> it was hilarious. Okay. And they, they, they were sort of playing along in the beginning, and then they thought, wow, they're really taking this very seriously. And the only reason they actually got a reservation at our restaurant was because Al Pacino canceled. <laughs> That is amazing. Okay, and you're a grandfather? Ah, oh, man, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How, how, do you, yeah. how do you like it? My, uh, my granddaughter, Alma, is going to be four this June. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, born right before COVID, right before pandemic. So, again, it was that, you know, young kids, they're, you know, they're readjusting. They're, they're being socialized now. Yes. And it's like, for a, a minute, it was like, Okay, you know, that's grandpa, but he's wearing a mask. And you know, it's like, <laughs> who is this who is this person? So yeah, it's taken it's taken a moment to sort of stay connected and be connected and yeah, but it's it's pretty amazing. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Will y'all stick around for a little bit? Okay. All yeah. right. Well with Martha Martin and Emilio, we'll be right back. You know, most people don't have the luxury of just picking up and leaving it all behind, Daniel. Well, I'm not most people. If I don't have your blessing, that's fine. But don't judge this. Don't judge me. My life here might not seem like much to you, but it's the life I choose. You don't choose a life, Dad. You live one. Amazing. We're back with Martin and Emilio. Your movie, The Way, came out 12 years ago. What made mm. you decide to put it out again? So coming out of the pandemic, it felt like this movie needed to be rediscovered. Mm -hmm. And I think people are hitting the reset button. I think they're trying to figure out what the next part of their lives are looking like. And this movie sort of feels like the kind of film that we need mm -hmm. more than we've ever needed it because it's about reflection. It's about... Uh, self-examination. It's about taking a long walk and trying to figure out what your place is in the world. Mm. And, and it feels, it just feels more relevant now. And it's been sort of doing this kind of a, a, a 12 year marathon mm -hmm. where people have just, have been so changed by it. I mean, we get emails and, and well, you don't get emails, <laughs> <laughs> but he gets, he still gets snail mail. <laughs> and it's people saying this movie changed my life. And how often do you get a chance to make a movie right. where people dial in and say, hey man, your movie made an impact. Mm. You know, as, a, as an actor, as a singer, you do something that goes, that just connects with people. Right. And it's profound. Love that. Yeah. That's impactful. It's, a, it's, about the, it, it's about community. You know, all of our journeys are really journeys to ourselves. And we, 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 when we realize ourselves, we realize we are in each other. We can't separate ourselves. So this guy starts out on the journey not wanting to be bothered, and he becomes absorbed in the community of the mm -hmm. Camino, which is what happens to all. We can't live alone. We shouldn't. Uh, so it's about community. It's about mm -hmm. connecting. All our journeys are really an effort to unite the will of the spirit with the work of the flesh. So you're on this journey. You have to walk. Yes. It has to be a physical uh, endurance, but at the same time, the nourishment and the journey is into your own heart. Yeah. Mm. You gotta speak. Indeed. Mm. Mm. And Martin, you say this is like your favorite film or project? This is the best thing I've ever done in my life and the most, most satisfying wow. by far. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it was a, a, a family affair from beginning to end. Uh, it started with his son, uh, met his wife on the Camino in 2003. Uh, I came home without Taylor. He said, where is he? I lost a son on the Camino. He started going over to examine the Camino and started writing this story. Mm -hmm. And that's what became the way, yeah, eventually, yeah. Nice, okay. He had a lot of input in, in the script. He, he wanted to be this action star as we were putting the script together. He was like, hey, you know, the, the backpack will fall into the river and I'll swim after. I'm thinking, man, you know, you're you 70 years old and it, wow. Um, there you have it. It's like, so, and then, but, but then we got, we got up to doing this, to, you know, actually doing the scenes. And he says, hey man, whose idea was this? I'm like, it was yours. You the uh, guy, the, the, you see me in the water there. 
Uh, clearly, it's me uh, <laughs> uh, in a desperate situation, but I wasn't supposed to go in. We had a stuntman, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he did the first take, and he looked in the camera and spoiled it. So we had to move on, and he wouldn't do it again because he was... The, the rapids were too strong. He said, I'm not a uh, water guy, I'm a horse I'm guy. I'm a horse guy. I was like, so, we picked, like, so he took off, he left. And Emilio said, if you, if you don't go in, we can't do the scene. So I, I did, I ended up going in and- uh, All right. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be changing for so many. Okay, I have to ask, do so you think it'll be a sequel? Uh, hopefully. That's yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah. 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 I mean, it feels like Tom's journey isn't over at the end of this. Uh, my character who dies on the Camino, mm -hmm. Uh, which is the impetus for what he, you know, he picks up his bag and he does the Camino to finish it for him. But his, his journey isn't over at the end of this film. So I think a sequel feels timely. It feels right on, right on the money, I think that, mm -hmm. and as long as you're ready to, to go back out and put that backpack on. That's right. That's what it's all about. And it's gonna bless a lot of people and change a lot of lives. We want that se sequel. Will y'all come back again and see us? We will. We will. So happy to have you. Thank Please you. do. Thank you. The Way will be available from Fathom Events and Theaters Nationwide May 16th. We'll be right back. Our next guest grew up right before our eyes on ABC's hit show Blackish, and now she's the executive producer of her new Disney series, Saturdays. Please welcome the beautiful Marseille Martin. I cannot kick this off without telling you, my son and all his cousins is gonna be so mad Ooh. that I did not tell them you was here today. Ain't gonna never hear the end of this, y'all. They oh, have been man. waiting for you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get cool points, though. Okay. okay, cool mama points, I love that. You see that? Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. This is like a dream come true, and I gotta tell you, one of my goals ever since I was little, uh -huh. cause Dream Girls was my all-time favorite movie growing up. Really? Yes. Yay! And one of the main reasons why I even started acting in the first place, cause I can mimic that movie from top to you bottom. Could. Mm hmm And one of my goals <laughs> was I wanna meet the whole entire cast of Dream Girls, and you are the last person. I'm the last one? The last person. To achieve that goal, so mission accomplished. And I, I'm just gonna angle. I'll be like, 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 don't start. Listen, uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm happy to close it out. Yes. Oh yes, my God! Thank yes. you for sharing. Of course, sharing of course. That. I feel like that was needed. From, I love from it. My young self. Yes. Okay, so you grew up on the hit show Blackish, mm -hmm. right? How oh was my it? Goodness. What do, you, what do you think when you look back at that? How was it growing up in front of the world? Oh, man. I mean, I started when I was eight years old. So Eight? Yes, yes. So we were going for a very, very long time, but I am so grateful that that was my start because that was my first TV show. That was my first time going into this, this world of the industry. So, man, I'm, I'm so grateful to the cast, to the crew, to where it was just such a loving set and everybody treated everybody like such and yeah. like a family. And... No, I mean, of course, Miles is my homie. We talk all the time. <laughs> Listen, he he will be my forever twin, for sure. Oh, that is so sweet. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're all proud of you guys because we watched you grow up. Yeah. Do you get that a lot? Oh, I do. I definitely do. And, you know, it's one of those things that's like, we don't want you to grow up no more, you know? I mean, but if I, if I grow up, then, you know, I'm going to die. Yeah. I'm going to die. You know, you, know, you know what I mean? So I got to, you know, keep, <laughs> keep we, moving, keep going forward. Yes. And, you know, this... This is like another chapter in the book, you know yes. what I mean? And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm super grateful to be able to jump into these spaces, like producing my own content, because, you know, I, I grew up in a space where it was, it was love, and yeah. it was a, a loving set, and something that was comfortable and safe. So I, I'm lucky enough to create those environments for other young black girls yes. like you. You're such a great example, a great you. role model, and you're making us all so proud, I have to say that. And you're now, you're 18? Yes, I'm 18 years old. Oh, my God. Yes. And, and yes, look at that. <laughs> and you had a party this year? Like, I tell did. us about that. Yeah, girl, I had a, uh, uh -oh. last year. <laughs> I what had, did you well, no, it was cool. I had a Shrek 2 theme birthday party, because Shrek 2 is one of my favorite movies. Is it? Yes, right next to Dreamgirls, it was okay. Shrek 2. And I, I love that movie, and I always knew I wanted it for my 18th birthday. Uh -huh. So I had to go all out, and it was just far, far away. If you if you ever seen Shrek 2, yes. one of the best movies of all time, um, <laughs> in my opinion. So yeah, this show party. Yeah, this is the party. Girl. Yes, of course I wanted it to be the swamp-like vibe. We had trees. 
yeah, walking trees. Walking and, trees? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was a vibe. You know, I needed to go out all out for that. You know what I mean? You did just that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So you like directed and produced your own birthday production. I mean, you can say that, yeah. Girl. You can say that. But I, I definitely was on set of one of my movies and I was like, I gotta make sure this party works too, cause you know. You do some dope stuff. You was in Rihanna Fancy Beauty, I mean, fashion show, like. Oh man, oh man. Yes. What? What's that called, like? Man, after, okay, so after my, my party, after I turned 18, a couple of days later, I get a call. They're like, hey, we want you to be in this runway show. You know, a little savage, a little expensive. Yes. So I was like, okay, yes. But man, I mean, one of my biggest goals was to work with Rihanna. And yeah, yeah. in that way, is, is amazing. So. You are cleaning up, young lady. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God, I want to know what's next. So can you stick around for a little bit? Oh, of course, I'm right here too. All right, <laughs> we'll be right back with Miss Marseille. Okay, guys, I put together a little something something for Duchess's 25th anniversary of Shy Girls Party. Blame. <laughs> it's Duchess and Princess's old CD cover. Dope, right? Wow, Paris? Mm -hmm. Girl, I feel like the 90s just ran up and slapped the taste out of my mouth. I mean, look at those clothes and those earrings. What do they have 24 karat anchors on their ears? Mm hmm. And I'm thinking about blowing up 25 of these and spreading them across the United Center floor so people could take pictures of them, you know, keeping up with the theme of the 25th anniversary and all. <laughs> hmm. We're back with Marseille Martin. Okay, tell us about your new show, Saturdays, that you executive produce. Yes, it is on Disney Channel and Disney Plus as well. It comes on every Friday. And oh my goodness, we've been working on it for about three years now. And yeah, oh. it's one of the ones I'm producing. Yes, and it's, it has so many levels to it. We, we talk about skating, of course. It's the roller skating culture. Mm -hmm. And it's, of course, on the south side of Chicago. I don't know who's in Chicago out here. From but, south side? Yes, okay. yes. And no, it's just all about family and love. And of course, we have our amazing trio of amazing young black actresses. Love. They are beautiful. Yes. Shout out to Danielle, Daria, and Peyton. They are incredible. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And you have a no black Hang rule. Yes. Okay, tell me about that, you know, within the project. So, uh, yes, of course, I have a gene. Uh, my production company is called Genius Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And for me, I always want to create things that I would personally watch and something that is not only that, but also timeless and something that you can continue to watch over and over again if you want to. And for, for families as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Black pain is something that, of course, other creators can talk about, and that's their own lane. But when it comes to me, I want to just spread black joy, love, and yeah, love that. Yeah, just alluding that into into what I into I into what I want to create out there. You know, it's my vision, so I want to put that out there in the best way I can. So. And you are, and we love it so much. Thank you so much. Okay, now, girl, we got to talk about these nails. Okay, I know we, we, they got the nails in common. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see them nails. Look, they sparkling. Because I was they checking yours out, too. Yes. What we got going on? Yes, I got... I, I love emerald right now. That's that's my thing. Uh -huh. So if y'all can see it from here, yeah, it's like a little emerald with gold flakes inside and stuff. I love it. But I also got uh, Mari by Marseille, which is my press-on nail line. Nice! Ooh. Yes. Yes. Because, you know, I love getting my nails done so much, but also, too, uh, the convenience of getting them done is a lot to maintain at, uh, at times. That is so true. So being able to switch on, press on nails that also are luxurious mm -hmm. and feel like something that you can just pull up to the nail salon and get done is something quick and easy. So I think, you know, yeah, I love I it. like that. Yeah. Okay. Because at times for like nails is kind of an extension of our jewelry. Mm -hmm. And my favorite is the stiletto shape. What's your favorite shape? You know, my favorite shape is like a long square Ooh. right now. I'm okay. into that. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. I used to get stilettos a lot, but then I would poke myself in the eye too much. And like I would, I like those, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a scratcher, so it would, it would just hurt too much. So. Oh my God. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Listen, you know what? I have to keep my nails like this because my son don't like me to have any other shape. And if I change it, because he like me to scratch his head. Ah, see, so I get that. So if I change the shape, mama, did you change the shape of your nails? And it's like, okay, so I have to have. Yeah. See, I'm being yeah. a mama right now. See, I ain't got no kids, so I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm oh, out here. No. I'm here. <laughs> Look, I'm just out. Yeah, you I'm slow down out. now. We don't need that. <laughs> see. <laughs> but since I'm on the mama kick, <laughs> I, I, I got my phone. Can you do a video for my baby before you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I snuck it out here. 
Okay, now it's Lil David. Well, I call him Camp David, right? And Camp he, David? Camp David. It's him and seven of his cousins, and every single one of them is in love with you. Oh. Okay? So I'm going to get some cool points. Come on, y'all, help me out. <laughs> if, you, if you do Lil David and Camp David a video. Hey, Lil David and Camp David, it's me. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> There she go, y'all happy? Now go get my dinner for my Mother's Day. All right, I want my right. good gifts. Tell them that too, go Yes, on. cool mom points right here. The <laughs> dopest mom. There you go. Take it, take it from her. Thank you so much for being here. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> You're amazing. Keep shining the way you do. Thank you. Isn't she beautiful, y'all? Be sure to check out Marseille's new show Saturdays on Disney Channel and Disney Plus. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.